The very, very accomplished amateur who has had his career and progress stifled by injury, the pandemic. And he is raring to go. And, well, Barry, you hear the phrase itchy knuckles. I think you, you think <laughs> of a fighter like Jordan Reynolds. You called a, a couple of his first three fights a, as a pro. He's yeah. got an exciting style. He has, but this was one of the things I said, as good as he's been and as accurate as he can be with his work, sometimes over eager. You know, the Kevin doesn't walk into shots, so like he did just there. So I've done a couple of Calavero fights as well, and he can be, he looks, <laughs> he looks like a guy who will fold as soon as you hit him. He's tough. He's really tough. You've got to hit him from all sorts of unusual angles to really get some, some joy out of, out of him. Well, we know Janae Bostan does exactly that. Heavy-handed, hits you from orthodox southport, screw shots straight, and all with brilliant balance and, and spite as well. And took him right to the end of the sixth round just a, a couple of months ago to, to get this guy out of there. Just the age that, that hangs over him now, Cavero, 38. How much did that fight take out of him? And some quite quite tough scraps with some of the, the names I mentioned on the ring walks. Had a, a long career, and he's coming to the end of it now. But just Reynolds, eager, sense the adrenaline in his work. With the crowd here, about 500 tickets he sold even at this stage. In the afternoon, oh, stiff right hand, just turned the knuckles over. Has that got Clavero's attention when he comes back? But all, everything about that was good. He didn't know he was, he was biting his hand. He had, he had him in the corner and he didn't do what he has done previously, just throw for the sake of throwing. He was fainting with the left hand, shuffling with the feet, looking for the opening. A good shot again. Felt that there, Clavaro. Yeah, off the left hand that time, wasn't it? The right, but just chopped down. He holds on. Just got to be careful there, Reynolds. Every now and again, he throws a right hand. It's a lovely shot. Just brings that right foot forward, squares himself up. Just needs to get a little bit more turn from the hips. But apart from that, it's a good positive start, isn't it? Training, of course, at the iBox gym these days. Had some good sparring the last year or so with Kevin Ajarko, who departed the gym not too long ago. He's been in with Felix Cash recently in this camp as well. Skimming right hand, Clavero just took, took the, uh, the wind out of that, just turned the chin. Reynolds working the body well. Good work. Pavera fires back, shortening the shots up too. And that's where Reynolds, when he throws his shots, you've got to move your feet. Even if you just pivot around the body, just get a different angle. See there, Pavera, once you fire, he fires back immediately. If you hold your feet, if you're square in front of him, you're going to catch something back. Good job there from Reynolds. Nice again there, a little shuffle with the feet there, but he let that right hand go. Well, busy first round, no, uh, no feeling out process at all. Jordan Reynolds giving the fans their value for money, getting straight to work. Yeah, and the right hand's been really good for him, he's really committing with it. Especially when he turns from the hips there rather than bring the right foot forward, it means you can follow up with more combinations. He came out first, in, he came out you know, as soon as the fell, he came out really fast and aggressive. And I thought, oh, he's going to rush his work again like he has in the past. And even though he's got results, he's going to get clipped a few times. And this guy is a guy you've got to be careful with. I think as the round went on, he was still busy, Reynolds, but cleverer with his work, a little bit more patient, but still getting the good results. He's historically quite a fast starter. We saw that in his last contest uh, against Carl Fail. He raced himself to, to 6 0 in his first 12 months as a pro, but it's been Reynolds who's set the pace early. Can Clavero go with him? Again, I did, I commented on that fight actually, and that was a, no, did, yeah. that was a, a, a perfect thing of what Clavero was all about. You know, he looked like he was going to fail, play with him at times. And Calvero, when you thought you got him hurt and you thought he was going to get out there, he fired back and, you know, failed out to be on his game, he really did. Of course, it was, uh, it was Ben Fail that Jordan Reynolds beat in the ABA Finals 2018. I was calling the action that night, and good to see with the, the trials and the tribulations he'd had that he got his 
moment at last because he had a couple of high quality finals against Ben Whitaker in the years preceding that just fell short no shame in it too but had to work for everything that he got in the amateurs and he isn't shy of putting the graft in just measuring the distance again finds the right hand of Clavero yeah. finds one on the return as well again he brings that right just as soon as he brings that right foot forward there as he throws that right hand there and this one he gets clipped A little half a step around the body just gives him a little different angle of attack there Reynolds Rivero again just leading off with the left hook Reynolds is a little bit static with the head you might see just Darren Barker bottom right of the, uh, the screen next to Eddie Hearn uh, his new manager along with Joe Kawasaki at International Sports Group they formed the company a few months ago and Darren said just want him to just move his head a little bit more when he's exchanging you can kind of see why because he's taking yeah. some on the return and against somebody like Cavero he can get away with it but as he goes up the levels it's not going to be the case he is exciting to watch you know it's good to watch and he's busy you know, and, he, and he commits to every attack good body shot there from Reynolds and then again he stays in front of his opponent has to take a, a few shots back well, Cyrus Patterson a long time friend of his on on GB South Paul welterweight, he described him a phrase I'd never heard before until a couple of years ago. He said, Game as a badger. <laughs> yeah, game as a badger. <laughs> He's not wrong, and you can see why as Reynolds just taps with the, the jab, trying to find his way into range, scoops that right hand around the side. That, oh, sounds, that sounds like an asset, but in this in the professional game, that's not always a good thing. Smarter, smarter everything in this game. Rivera tucked down. Putting the barricades up, Reynolds finds a, a way through with that lead uppercut, just trying to work around the sides under the elbows, found the right hand, trades with him now. A couple of seconds on the clock in this second round, jab to the body. Shot. Heavy right hand there from Reynolds. See so Al Smith, Eddie Lamb. In the corner there. Ian Weaver out of shot to, to be on the GB squad himself. Ian Weaver, oh, good, what a fighter he what was! What a brilliant impressive. fighter, yeah, and yeah. Uh, just didn't have the luck. He was, he was, it was so close between him and Luke Campbell. I think uh, in the lead up to, to 2012, he won the Commonwealth Games yeah. gold in 2010. He won European silver, and unfortunately for him, Luke Campbell was the best in the world at, at the Olympic Games. Yeah. And that's sometimes what you're up against to. to to battle for those international places and of course had an assist on on the brain which eventually and he had his pro license taken off him at i think 22 or 23 years of age he's still a young man with plenty to give and he's been on the pads with him at the open workout and in training this week really good team of experience at the i box gym in south london Joel Ren is in control but he's in a good little scrap it uh, but it, it was it always looked like that on paper didn't it, it always looked like you know especially stylistically the way reynolds is so committed that uh, he might have to take a few shots now clavero just fancies it a little bit here just boxing his way out the corner and he is a bit of a gunslinger we've seen that in fights gone by and that's why after you throw your punches here Reynolds, you've got to just even if it just takes a little half turn just a different angle of, and when you come back out then it's you had that harder to hit Another thing you should do is when he throws a jab, dip the legs and then throw the right hand over the top. Just change the levels of your head a little bit. Right on cue, just slid out of range. Read the oncoming attack, just comes back in, rounds a glancing right hand. And Pereira just boxed into the corner, finds a left hand to the body. Good head movement there though from Reynolds. Foot speed just starting to be the difference here as well when Reynolds is getting in and out with those attacks Clavero just starting to look like a 38 year old fighter he is well conditioned he's active he's busy the hands are, are moving but the feet aren't he's out of range on the counter Reynolds again just bustles forwards putting him under pressure here but I've seen Clavero like this before when he gets clipped like this he looks tired looks like he's, a, he's on his way out like he's going to fold and all of a sudden he fires back and Put you in a bit of trouble. Left hand to the body. He's tried to come up through the, the middle with the same hand. It's nice work there from Reynolds. Confidence there to sit in the pocket there and just move, move the shoulders, make him miss, make him pay.
See, if he just slows down there just a little bit, you know, the, he's still dizzy. But he's not throw as many, he, he, the more he, he sees more. The more time to, to set your, your shots up and his more quality in his work. I think the more Clavero opens up, the more he can get him to open up here, the more gaps there'll be to, to exploit for, for Reynolds as well. As he just works the other side that time with the, the right hand to the body, uppercut through the middle, the old Mike Tyson combination, right hand stiff, just turn the chin of Clavero, tries to fire back with Reynolds. Just watches it slide over the top. Dip those legs now and throw that right hand. Barra covering up, just tried to, to roll and shoot the right hand, but again, just short with it. Lands a nice left under the elbow there. Reynolds just steps off for a moment. Good action. I thought that was good three minutes of pressure there from, from Reynolds. They showed him some good strength, but more confidence in you know, when he is in close range than Sit nice and low, make you miss. Looking for the range. That's a lovely body shot. And then a lovely rip and a hook right through the uppercut right through the guard there from, from Reynolds. Just keeps using that forearm just to nudge himself yeah, a little bit of space to keep that guard occupied. So he, he's, he's put a lot of pressure on Clavero there. But if you look him in the corner, he looks tighter than Clavero, ironically. Good head movement there from Reynolds. Just stood up a little bit too tall, which means he couldn't fire back. He felt that there, Clavero, there he was walking to a jab as he was firing forward. Again, just finds himself boxed into the corner. Reynolds just looking for that big overhand yeah. right. I think he telegraphed it a little bit too much. We saw it coming from here. As did Clavero, just turn the shoulder. It's the shot though, it's the shot to throw, but he's just got to get low when he does it. He lifted the chin up with that uppercut. Again, he's starting to get through here. When Clavera moves back, when he moves anything, the left hand drops automatically. So he takes a step back, so that's when you want to go low and slide your front foot a little bit closer to the target, and then you fire that right hand over the top. Good right hand there from Cavero, bouncing off the head there to Reynolds. Jab to the body, just off that little feint to close the gap. Reynolds adjusting his range, having a look at his man, allowing Cavero to, to work, to let his hands go, try and find an opening of his own. Right hand under the elbow, lovely little change of angle there from Reynolds, and the left hook behind it, straight down the middle. And what you called for a couple of rounds ago, and now he's just starting to go through the combinations. I've just been texting Alan Smith about that one. <laughs> Even that, they've got a feed of you in their ear. <laughs> God bless them. <laughs> oh, good shot again there from Reynolds. But what a difference, though, just changing a little bit of angle, you know, the, the quality of the work. Oh, he's just bread and butter in the amateurs. He was, he was pirouetting like, a, yeah. like an orthodox Lomachenko. Good shot again there from Reynolds. Yeah, starting to really put the hands together. 50 seconds on the clock in round number four. Cavara letting them go. Left hook to the body lands. He tries to step off, but just catches a right hand as he stepped around on the turn. There's a left hook to the body just before that right mm. hand zone. Well, they just dropped the, dropped the elbows of Cavero. Reynolds making Cavero work, making him think as well, mentally draining, physically too. Chopping away at the body, changing the levels, coming back upstairs. And just a warning for the referee there just to keep the shots up. One was. Just drifting around the belt line. Well, that was clean. A little grimace from Clavero. He's kind of half in survival mode, but his instinct as, as a scrapper and as a proper fighter, you can just see 
Whenever there's an opportunity like that, he loves to take the bait. He loves to stand and trade. Good finish to the round from Reynolds, right hand on the belt, and no hard feelings. I can always remember, I think it was a, only a couple of weeks after the the ADA final, he took a very short notice fight on, on either a day or two against the Kazakh Southport Abu Khan Aman Khor in the World Series boxing over five rounds, and he wasn't fit for the fight at all by his own admission. Doesn't get much worse than a, one of the world's best Kazakh Southpaws, maybe a three-armed Cuban, but he, he equipped himself very, very well that night, and... He is willing to, to jump in and fight the best. He talks about being British champion in, in 18 months, although he might not have the experience. If the opportunity presents itself, an opportunity presents itself, he's the kind of fighter that he will force himself into that contest. And because he's a ticket seller, Barry, he will get those opportunities yeah, if he wants them. And, he's, you know, and he's, offensively, he's very good, isn't he? You know, he, moves, you know, he moves well. And I just think, you know, just uh, defensively, he's getting better from what I saw him the last time live. He, he is moving his head a little bit more. He is. You know, be a little bit more patient when he got him here, you know, he's not so gung-ho as I've seen him in the past, so he's still trying to be aggressive, still trying to impress, and so, and more importantly, trying to hurt the other guy, everything he throws is, you know, without being crazily hard, there's intention in his work. I think it's a good display for him, he's, you know, he's a guy here who can, who can take a good shot and fires back every time you throw a shot, so you know, this is a fight that can be extremely hard for you. I think Reynolds has, Reynolds has adjusted as the fight's gone on and he's made it more comfortable for him as the rounds have um, gone by. And also, when you're in an aggressive fight, when you are piling forward, you are going to take punches. It's impossible not to. Good work from Clavero, just fights his way off the ropes right on cue. Reynolds not allowing him to, to gather any momentum, pushes him straight back into the corner. One, two, pierces the guard. You can't miss him with the right hand. Every time he lets it go, Reynolds has success. Romero just took the sting off at that time, just turned the corner, but immediately finds himself in the adjacent corner. The two exchange right hands. That was good for Clavero. Yeah, Reynolds fight just walks square on two. A right hand, just a, a little hint of concern on the face of Darren Barker, ringside. No, he felt that, to be fair. He did the right thing, though. He held on. But again, throwing that right hand forward, you've got to sometimes turn from the waist and the hips, the shoulders, I should say, and not too much over the front foot. But at the same time, he didn't have a success with the same punch, the right hand, all the time. You are just going to wing it in, aren't you? Yeah. Rivero just stepping around the outside of the ring, trying to force Reynolds to, to reset, just give himself a, a few seconds. Just mental respite, a jab to the body. Reynolds backs himself into that corner, throws that one-two again. And Rivera's dealt with the pressure pretty well. He's a kind of fire team, but he is under fire. He never looks like he's in too much trouble. He doesn't look like he's under too much pressure. At 38 years of age, a testament to the conditioning, the regularity with, with which he's boxed, the kind of opponents he's faced, and the mouse that he has covers up another right hand, just takes this thing out of it, just starting to show the telltale signs of, of fatigue there. Just looks for a, a goal to there. As Reynolds lands another combination with a left hook to the body. To finish. He's done well here, Reynolds. He, he took a good shot, felt it. Still won the round, but Box a bit more cautious first just to recover, and I think that was the right move for him. We saw Big John Hedges in the fight before this one, successful over six against Alice Makovic. Will his stablemate Johnny Fisher himself roll on to 7-0? and He's up against Dominic Musil from Czech Republic in that third contest of the broadcast portion of the bill. He's a big man, isn't he, Johnny Fisher? And that 
Romford Army will be out in force a little bit later on live on the zone. We go live at seven o'clock local time, just over an hour. Gary Cully and Jao Belmedi kicking us off. Ellie Scott, he challenges for the European title against Mary Romero before Johnny Fisher ring walks. And then, of course, Jordan Gill defends his European title against Kiko Martinez to set the table very nicely indeed for Katie Taylor defending once again her undisputed World Lightweight Championships against the Argentinian national champion Karen Elizabeth Carabayar. All live on the zone later on this evening. And right here into the final round between Jordan Reynolds and Jose Clavero. Been a good competitive fight. Reynolds has been in charge on every round. On your scorecard, Barry? Oh, yeah, clearly won every round. Yeah, there hasn't been no argument there. And I, you know, he got caught with a good shot in the last round and you know, did the right thing, held on, recovered. And then I think he just made sure he just did enough to win the round but didn't take any risks. But he's been good. You know, he's always good to watch Jordan Reynolds. He always is. You know, there's still a few, a few more things to work on. I think that it's evident they've done more work. I think there's more patience in his work than, I, than I've seen in the past. I think that's a positive sign. And it's just getting the balance right. We've been having that patience and still being that aggressive, you know, marauding fight that, that he wants to be. And that's important. You know, whatever, whatever, whatever it is, whatever your, your coach wants you to do, you have to be comfortable with it. You, know, you want to be a certain way. And your trainer has to work around that and try and give you the right knowledge for that style. Just lands a little slip right hand counter, but Clavero comes straight back on the front foot, firing with him. Just under a minute 30 to go, and lovely. The yeah, right hand. <laughs> Clavero doesn't care, does he? Well, he's not a complainer, but he, there was a wince there, and he did, yeah. he did just. Kind of slow blink at Reynolds as if to say, come on, mate. Nice chopping right hand to the body that time. Reynolds walking forward, Pavero tries to step to him. And well, if you wanted the kind of perfect six rounds to, to shake the ring rust off after bang on a year of inactivity, I think this has been just about right in terms of the matchmaking for, for Reynolds. Enough of a threat to keep him honest, not enough to, to really worry him too much, but it's keeping him switched on. And it's been a good fight. Yeah, I think that you just summed up perfectly there. I think it's not it's not just a six round where you, where you know the guy's durable, but he's not offering nothing back. It's a fight that's kept Reynolds on his toes here. Yeah, I think the sharpness there in this fight for him will, will, do, will put him right back on track. I think that's what you want. You, you want to be in a competitive fight without the risk of losing. If that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. And it will shortly be in November. He said he does want to be out before the end of the year is up as well as he just catches the left hook on the exit there, just dipping and rolling. To get back to centering. Just looks for the little slip counter, but Clavero just smothered his workers. The second stick down at the end of round number six. And that is all. Really good contest between the two. I'm sure Reynolds will feel the knuckle which has been scratched tonight. Boys, you have to be a patient man these last four or five years in just about every respect. Still, the fan base follows him. Still, they buy the tickets, and they will continue to do so. A really popular man in his local town of Luton, and uh, well, we set a high pace from the off barrier, and, and he pretty much stuck with it for, for the six rounds. He, he did. I, I think he came out too fast in the, in the start of the first round, and I think he adjusted pretty quickly. And then, and then, you know, when he was, he was mounting attacks, but he was, he, you can see, it was just a little half a second. He was thinking, making sure he was throwing the right punches. And he was, for the most part, you know, he was, he was throwing those nice little one-twos, the right hand was a shot that he never missed with all night, to be fair. Dipping down to the body, the one time he did change the, the angle, come around and threw that lovely left hook after the, the spin on the right-hand side. I thought it was good work. He takes a few shots coming forward, of course, and he, he took one particularly, one hard one in his own corner in round five. But did the right thing, held on. I think all these things are learning experiences, and I, and I think, all in all, they'll be very happy with tonight's work. The heads to centering referee has the fighters there David Diamante has the scorecards let's hear from him ladies and gentlemen after six rounds of action we go to referee Marcus McDonald's scorecard it reads 60 to 55 for your winner he's still undefeated the wonder Joel